Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Friday, July 29th, 2022. Thank you for tuning in. Glad to have you guys here. Now, you have all heard the thing about an immovable force and an unstoppable object. <laughs> this is kind of like what's going on. What we have is we have pressure building in the system. The Fed's exerting this pressure against inflation. This is a force coming into play, and it's creating this tremendous pressure for the system to crack in one of two directions. It could, we could have a layman type moment where the system suddenly goes into a contraction, something like what happened in 2008, maybe even magnitudes greater, or Things could continue moving on in this direction that it's moving on in right now, you know, which is upwards trending toward higher, yet higher inflation. But the Fed's continuing to push their narrative, push, uh, not, it's not just a narrative, but it is sort of. Because on one side they're given and on the other side they're taken away. So we see with their raising interest rates, they're taking away. With their quantitative tightening, they're taken away. But they're do also, the European Central Bank and the Fed, they've also started these programs where they're messing with the bonds, which is given on one side. And so goodness knows behind the scenes what they're doing to support these markets right now while they're big talk about they want to fight inflation. And everything that they're going to do on the other side of this operation is going to be inflationary. So whatever they're not telling you that they're, what they're doing, that's going to be inflationary. And what they are telling you what they're doing is going to be inf is going to be deflationary. And we got these two forces at play. We've had these two forces at play for several years now. Let's get the chart started right here and take a look at all this. And uh, what it says here is it says that if the Fed continues on or marches on with what they're doing, they're creating another layman situation. Larry McDonald warns Powell is pumping a false narrative. Crucial week for global financial markets. Uh, with all the big tech giants reporting quarterly earnings and the Fed hiking its key interest rates further from 1.75 to 2.5%. So all the world's investors right now are asking what comes next. It's, they're saying now that Jerome Powell will soon be forced into another pivot. Now, I predicted this pivot like a year in advance. <laughs> you know, and they're all talking about it now. That's because now we're on top of it. Uh, on the other side of this pivot, you know, I see the danger going down for another Lehman situation. But first, for that to happen, We've got to have the Fed where, where they're not talking anymore about quantitative tightening or raising interest rates any longer. And so I believe that moment or that day will arrive. Uh, let's get in there now. Let's take a look at the silver price today. And, you know, we are seeing a pickup in, the, uh, in all of the uh, uh, commodities and we're seeing a pickup in price of gold and silver and and cryptocurrencies is taking a bounce now too you know have we put in the bottom of the bottoms well we're gonna have to wait and see but here we go 20 cents up for silver today which is looking good you know what just two days or three days ago we were eighteen dollars and fifty cents my gosh you should have got into there to the coin store or got in there and get yourself a tube I hope you guys did at the low price uh, and, you know, I know you have to pay your premiums, but you got to understand what you're buying here. You're buying insurance because it has no counterparty risk. It's an asset you can hold in your hand, and it, silver's always going to be money, guys. It's money. It's real money. So, I mean, it would be a good idea, you know, to have it as insurance because... If this system goes down, what can you actually hold? I mean, uh, like I say, they're risking a layman moment that could be better, worse. I mean, it could get out of control on them. 
suddenly. You know, it almost got out of control back during the 2008 financial crisis. They almost lost control over it. It took an awful lot of liquidity to bring it back. Can you imagine if, it, if we did go into an event like that now? And if they lost control over it and, uh, and they had to bring it, they were forced to bring it back? How many trillions of dollars it would take to cover it over? And what would happen to inflation then? I mean, this whole thing is becoming unimaginable. Going by their own metrics of the CPI, you're going to lose 10% of your money every year. Or 9%. That's to the point now where savers out there and stuff are, are going to start to really question, should I keep my money in the bank? And they're going to start to look for alternative ways to uh, hold their money that's not going to lose 10% per year. How can you save and lose 10% of your money every year? This forces you to invest or something or do something. This forces you into the equities or into the whatever you can get into that's going to make some sort of return because inflation this tax is already up to 10 percent or almost 10 percent tax it's a hidden tax and i mean uh this is going to start to put americans and and everybody who is tied to the dollar in slowly but surely into poverty i mean let's face it okay just Think about this. Say a person build a fortune up over a 10-year period, which is a fairly short period of time for a person to go from being a nobody with no money to being a rich fat cat. And say they did it over a 10-year period. Well, that's 10% per year. This is the reverse gear of that, where you're losing 10% per year. And 10%, you're going to go from a rich fat cat into a nobody. And what is it? It's just inflation, a hidden tax. And it's going higher. This is going to take everyone into poverty, but it does it. It's not going to do it the first year. It's only going to take a 10% chomp. Second year, another 10%. And it just keeps going that way until you until you don't even you can't even afford a hamburger. Okay. Let's take a look now at cryptocurrencies. The cryptocurrency is 1106 billion. Boy, that's a big jump. It was 900 and something the other day. And uh, we're looking at a Bitcoin price of 24,125. You can see the jump there. It's a pretty good little jump. You know, I mean, you could have had them for like 18,000, 19,000. Now they're 24, almost 24,000. But you notice something? Whenever something's really low like that, Nobody wants it. Nobody wants to touch it. Right? When it's really cheap and everything, nobody wants it. And, and on the opposite of that is when Bitcoin was $68,000, everybody was excited. I got to get some of that. I got to get me some of that. Right? Okay. Let's take a look now at uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. 32614 and we're looking at it's up 84 points on the day. I'm going to refresh the page here for a sec. 75 points up on the day. So we've got a stabilized market somewhat. But you know, there's that risk right now. It could come suddenly a crash in the markets. A layman moment. Something could snap because of what the Fed's still doing. We got to get that full pivot before we're going to be back onto the monetary madness and we're going to be back onto the boom and bull markets and everything else. We're going to have to have that full pivot first. We haven't had that yet. So we're a little bit here and there just quite yet. But it's looking it's looking like we've had that sea change and I talked about that yesterday and the reason why is is because of what they're doing over in Europe with the central bank supporting the markets and over here too. They've pretty much guaranteed to try to support the markets. But still, you know, the Fed is in this fight inflation sort of thing, and they haven't broken completely with that yet. Let's take a look at uh, crude oil at 101. You're getting good signals from crude here today. We've seen it pop 5%, and uh, 
we're seeing a price on the gold and silver pop and uh, and uh, and so this is good signals that we're back toward uh, less of this risk off we're back a little bit moving more toward back toward risk on again let's take a look at the move index today 119.93 bonds and rates today we're looking at still falling yields on the long end of the yield curve with the U.S. 10-year at 2.64 and the U.S. 30-year at 2.98, and it's moved five basis points to the downside. And now we're going to take a look at the U.S. dollar index at 106.03. And yeah, that's exactly what I'd expect. You know, in fact, I would expect the dollar to be falling a little bit more. But it's maintaining, pretty much maintaining today with, with a, quite a little bit of volatility today. Okay, guys, now stay tuned for the pets, and we'll catch you guys in the very next show. Oh, hello, guys. Welcome to the pets. Now, this next one's a bit of a story, and I thought it was really cute, so I'm only going to do one pet today, but it's kind of a cute little story. So let's get started. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look at this. Uh right here he says hello glenn i live in new zealand and and i fell from a tree on a farm when my home was chopped down so he must have been in a nest and there he is in the nest see luckily i was rescued by kevin and he brought me home i have lived with him ever since i was fed on snails and i got real big on them i sunbathe in the sun I fly around the house. Dad says I can look after myself, so I have to stay indoors. I get to muck around in the greenhouse with him, and now I'm big. I'm five years old. I am spoiled and mostly eat minced bugs, mealworms, veggies, and fruit. I like poking anything that looks unusual, like calculators, although Dad says I'm a not to, as I'll break them. Dad says I'm a cheap pet. I guess he means I'm worth it. Hope you can use one or more of my pictures. I'm really photogenic. So here he is. And uh, here is, here he is. And, and uh, let's take a look. Here's some pictures. Here's the first picture right here. And yeah, he is alpha cute, you know. Uh, this was uh, 2017. And this was back when he was just a chick. Okay, now we go back to the next one here, and oh no, this is when he's really a chick, but this is 2017 as well. Uh, you can see him uh, being fed by a pair of tweezers, and uh, here we go. Now he's a big boy in here. Well, I'm going to have to get in and take a look, to, so i got to enlarge this picture somehow. Uh, here we go. Pull it down a little bit. Oh, he is. He's 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 a big boy now. Uh, I wonder if he can say anything. Some sometimes uh, sometimes uh, uh, birds can talk, you know. Uh, okay. Uh, he says I'm way better looking now that I'm older. Mom lost a heap of pictures on a USB drive. She's not very good. On the IT stuff, I think I'm better. Dad says you're a good sort. He likes watching you on YouTube. Bye now. Uh, cuckoo, cuckoo, coo, coo. Chloe. So this is Chloe. Uh, let's take a look right here. Now let's pull in just a little bit. And uh, it looks like she's trying to get a drawer open or something. <laughs> she got her beak in there. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to tell you, some types of birds are very, very intelligent. One bird I find to be very intelligent is, is crows, you know. I, I, I've often liked, I like crows, you know. And crows can speak. Uh, let's take a look here. And uh, we're going to take a look at this picture. And you can see that, yeah, she could break the calculator very easily. <laughs> <laughs> with that beak that beak is made for cracking nuts you know 
and uh, stuff like that and hunting for worms and things like that you know and uh, foraging and uh, calculator keys uh, they could uh, they could easily be picked off anyway <laughs> but that's back in 2017 when she was more or less a chick uh, okay guys uh, thank you for looking at my show and uh, we'll catch you guys in the very next episode you guys have a great day bye bye